And atmospheric rivers have packed a punch across the Bay Area in the past few years. Communities have dealt with flooding, down trees and mudslides. Now a new study in the Journal of Climate reveals they are getting bigger, stronger, and more frequent. So let's bring in meteorologist Darren Peck to explain this phenomena. It's something that we'd actually been talking about for a couple of years now, mm. that there, the research is pointing to the fact that atmospheric rivers are going to become more numerous, but maybe more important than that, they're going to become more intense oh. in a warmer climate. There's a couple of things we can do to kind of help visualize how this will go. I don't know if we can switch the weather computer so we get it in the big monitors, guys, during this visit. So what we're going to do... Come back to this image over here. You take a look at the um, representation of what atmospheric rivers were like historically, up to like the 1980s. You can see the color code on there is in the yellow, which, and we're just gonna generalize it. That was kind of the baseline. If you look at what we see for the future, the forecast shows you what, just one snapshot here, that we expect atmospheric rivers to reach a higher degree of intensity through time. But there's a little bit of background to add for some context on the study that came out on this today. There's a couple of things we know well about this. Let's take a look at the Northern Hemisphere over here to my side. One of the things that we've already gotten familiar with is visualizing what these look like. So there are your plumes of higher concentrations of water vapor coming out of the subtropics and pointed at the mid latitudes where we live. This is actually live. So this is the last day and a half of imagery, and you can see even the rain today is a weak atmospheric river. It's not necessarily one of the ones we're concerned about from this study. But the reason why we anticipate atmospheric rivers are going to be getting stronger is a combination of two things. The ocean's getting warmer. Primarily, that's the big one. And now we're just looking at regular sea surface temperature here. Take a look at the image over my shoulder. This shows you not what the regular sea surface temperatures are, but what the sea surface temperatures are in relation to average. And now you get a totally different story. The areas in red show you where the oceans are above average, and that is a snapshot of our oceans today. So we're well above average in terms of the sea surface temperatures. You can look at it on a chart, and that chart will show you, if you look back at what sea surface temperatures were like in the 80s, they're down here. The red line is this year, and I'll just tell you. On average, the global oceans have warmed by about a half a degree. That's a lot to warm the oceans. But in addition to that, the atmosphere itself has warmed by about one and a half degrees. And what we know is for every degree that you warm the atmosphere, the atmosphere can now hold 7% more water vapor. And that right there explains this whole issue. So we've gone up about a degree and a half. That means the atmosphere can now already hold about 10% more water vapor than it did back through the 1980s when atmospheric rivers were at their baseline. And that's why going forward, this is an oversimplification oversimplific over of what today's study is telling us, but the general idea is, yes, indeed, atmospheric rivers are expected to get more intense, and it's the higher end ones, the ones that are on the higher end of intensity that have already shown a signal of increasing in number. That's what today's study was telling us. But again, we've looked at this image now for a couple of years here, and it's, this just adds to our degree of confidence in this idea. All right, Paul's going to have more on today's weak atmospheric river coming up in the full forecast a little bit later for now. Ryan, back to you. All right, thanks, Darren.